There's a house we can build. Every room inside is filled with things from far away. The special things I compile, each one there to make you smile. They can say it all sounds crazy. They can say, they can say we've lost our minds. I don't care, I don't care if they call us crazy. Run away to a world that we desire. A million dreams are keeping me awake. I think of what the world could be. A vision of the one I see. A million dreams is all it's gonna take. Oh, a million dreams for the world we're gonna make. There's a house we can build. Every room inside is filled with things from far away. The special things I compile, each one there to make you smile on a rainy day. They can say, they can say it all sounds crazy. They can say we've lost our minds. I don't care, I don't care if they call us crazy. Run away to a world that we design. Every night I lie in bed, the brightest colors fill my head. A million dreams are keeping. be There's a house we can build. Every room inside is filled with things from far away. The special things I compile. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Global Online Summit on Technology for Inclusive and Innovative Education. Today, we are honored to be joined by representatives from UNESCO, governments, universities, and Huawei, as well as experts, scholars, and partners from around the world. They will share their views and experiences on how digital technology can enable inclusive and innovative education. My name is Emilia Sun, and I will be your host for the summit. Today is International Youth Day, an awareness day designated by the United Nations. This year's theme is Intergenerational Solidarity, creating a world for all ages, 
which emphasizes that solidarity across generations is key for sustainable development. It also highlights the need for collaboration to foster strong and equitable intergenerational relations and partnerships to leave no one behind. We know that education is a top priority for young people. With much of the world still feeling the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic, young people and children remain vulnerable to falling behind in education. Has the education system recovered from the shock caused by the pandemic? Has it become more resilient to deal with potential large-scale disruptions in the future? What roles can digital technology play in the face of these challenges? I'll now give the floor to our guest speakers. First, let's welcome Ms. Stefania Giannini, UNESCO Assistant Director General for Education to deliver the opening speech. Excellencies, dear participants, it's a real pleasure for me to address the opening of this third edition of the Tech for All Summit. Well, this year, the topic, Technology for Inclusive and Innovation Education, uh, resonates with the upcoming Transforming Education Summit, a key initiative I'm sure you are aware of launched by the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres to actually recommit to education as a common good globally. Over the last two years, the acceleration of digital transformation has continued to affect almost every facet of our lives, every dimension, and is also very much true of education. And we are clear about the challenges. And now, as we recover from the profound impact of COVID-19, we cannot simply go back to business as usual. We must build back different and better education systems. We must transform education accordingly. So we need a paradigm shift towards systems that are more open to systems, more flexible, holistic, putting learners at the very center, the very core, and respecting their differences. UNESCO's flagship initiative on the futures of education, which has been launched uh, two years ago, 2019, mobilized countries and international community in its sport to reimagine education. Technology can play a critical role, a catalytic role in the largest system of force to transform education, to reimagine education, as long as it's a tool in the service of the humanity and not the, the other way around. Digital learning and transformation is one of the five thematic focus areas of the TES, the Transforming Education Summit, this September in New York. UNESCO hosted, as you may be know, the pre-summit last June, 28th, 30 June, in Paris, uh, that gathered some uh, 154 ministers and some 2,000 participants in person to take stock of the current global dynamic around transforming education and most importantly, to identify key transformative action solutions ahead of the summit. They agreed that investment and actions in digital learning should be guided by the three core principles. Let me mention them. First, center the most marginalized in policy and strategy. Second, ensure free, high quality public digital education platforms or learning content. Third, ensure the requisite innovation in pedagogy. Well, these recommendations from the consultations include the need to ensure connectivity and digital learning opportunities for all, to build and maintain robust, free, public digital learning content and platforms, and also to focus on how technology can enable evidence-based instructional practice at scale. Strong partnerships and cooperation are required to make it, this happen. The IT industry should make more free and low-cost digital solutions available for digitally marginalized groups while creating applications to address the various forms of disabilities and of what's actually happening. Uh, also in this partnership between UNESCO and Huawei. And uh, I'm very grateful to Huawei for the great cooperation we are having. The project Technology Enabled Open Schools is enabling the emergence of future schooling models. It's also evidence of the fruitful cooperation among countries, 
partners in advocating for equal access to connectivity nationwide, the development of free public digital learning content and the strengthening of teachers, students' digital competencies. Of course, we must continue. We want to continue working together towards the digital transformation and innovation in education, which really leaves no one behind. I wish you a very successful Tech for All Summit. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Giannini, for your wonderful speech. As Ms. Giannini said, Technology can play a critical and catalytic role in education transformation, and digital learning is pivotal for a more inclusive education system worldwide. We need to use technology to ensure connectivity for all, build free public digital learning content and platforms, and focus on how technology can enhance innovation and change in teaching methodologies. Next, I'd like to invite Mr. Kevin Zhang, CMO of Huawei ICT Infrastructure, to share his thoughts with us. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us. And welcome to the Tech for All Global Education Online Summit. I can agree more with what Ms. Jiani just said. As a global community, we needed to recommit to education and put learners at the center. Technology can play a critical role in this transformation. Huawei is very proud to take part in the Technology Enabled Open Schools for All project with UNESCO. Leading up to the UNESCO's Transformation Education Summit, the theme of today's event is Technology for Inclusive and Innovative Education. I would like to take this opportunity to share what we are doing to support education around the world. As a tech company, digital inclusion is an important part of our work. Back in 2019, we launched the Tech for All program to help promote digital inclusion around the world. Education is one of our key focus points. We work closely with partners to enable equality and quality in education for learners from all backgrounds. We do this in three ways. Connecting schools, promoting digital skills, and supporting STEM curriculum. Digital technology is key to these efforts, in particular connectivity. For example, in Kenya, about 75% of the country has 4G coverage. But in this countryside, less than 3% of the primary schools have internet connect connections. In the middle of the pandemic, Online classes were not an option for many communities. To fill this gap, in 2021, we worked with the local government and partners to connect 13 schools with reliable broadband connections. With internet, more than 6,000 teachers and students now have access to quality online resources for the every first time. Of course, connecting people isn't enough. The skills to use digital technology are just as important. Even in highly developed countries like France, only about half of the population has basic digital skills. To fill this gap, we turn out shipping containers into mobile training centers called DigiTrack. They drive out to remote committees and provide free training on how to use the internet, email, video conferencing, and even some basic coding skills. In just six months, our DigiTrack in France has trained over 
1,500 young learners in nine different cities. We want to help level the playing field as these bright young minds enter the workforce. We are also working with partners help schools develop a digital curriculum and post STEM education. In China, for example, teachers and students in rural communities have reliable internet access and solid digital skills, but they are still lack quality STEM coursework. This is a serious disadvantage for rural students. To help fill this gap, we worked with local teachers and partners to develop STEM courses that help students get up to speed on new technologies. This project has already reached 500 students in six schools. As we expand our work, we hope to inspire more young students to learn about science and technology, and maybe one day pursue a career in STEM. All told, working with more than 20 different partners, our Take for All program has helped bring accessible, equitable, and quality education to more than 400 schools. In total, we have touched the lives of more than 100,000 students, teachers, and employee youngs. Of course, this is only the beginning. We needed to do more because technology truly has the power to transform education for everyone. Digital tech like broadband, AI, VR, and blockchain can help improve efficiency, personalization, emotion, and quality assurance in every step of the education process. Every small step counts. We are eager to work closely with all partners and transform education and make it a more equitable and innovative space for all learners. So please join us and thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kevin Zhang, for your insightful speech. As Mr. Zhang said, digital technology is developing rapidly and is being applied to education programs worldwide. This will help make education more inclusive and innovative. We all hope to see more and deeper collaboration between the technology and education sectors to unleash the potential of technology in promoting the digital transformation of education. Next, let's welcome Mr. Jean Ntim Forjo, Deputy Minister of Education of Ghana. I am excited to be part of the 2022 Tech for All Education Global Summit. I bring you warm compliments of the President of the Republic of Ghana, His Excellency Nanado Dankwe Kufuado, and the Minister for Education, Honorable Dr. Yao Ose Edichum. Ladies and gentlemen, COVID-19 pandemic hindered the global economy in many ways, of which the process of teaching and learning has not been exempted. Indeed, COVID-19 has been the greatest disruption in our education sector throughout history, affecting the estimated more than 1.2 billion students in over 190 countries and leading to a sudden shift towards the use of online learning. The pandemic has brought along much uncertainty and changes to the education sector that could be long lasting and that may reshape education forever. Within the Ghanaian context, many institutions have experienced a season of transition reg regards to moving to a sustainable process of digital learning and teaching at all levels from pre-tertiary to tertiary. And the government of Ghana is at this point embarking on digitalization agenda across all sectors at the strategic and policy levels with education as a key component. Learning a contemporary education system is occurring in a connected world. 
hence the need for action on how these technological systems can be used to enhance teaching and learning in our institutions effectively. With emerging technologies and some difficulties associated with physical interactions in our educational system, e-learning can provide comparable access and quality education for all. Learning online helps to augment education and technology and also enhances student-teacher interactions compared to physical engagements. Huawei and UNESCO are working together on the TEOSS project, that is the Technology Enabled Open School System, together with the Ministry of Education, and it is a program that we are very much excited about. And the purpose of this project is to provide reliable connectivity to all schools at the pre-tertiary level especially. We are now at the piloting stage where Sandlos, which is our implementing agency, is, is, is implementing it and rolling it out. The purpose of this project is to pilot, test, and scale it up. With the current demand for tertiary education as a result of increased senior high school enrollment, adoption of technology as a tool for learning can increase access to tertiary education. And we are excited about the support that the UNESCO Ghana office is given to the implementation of the TOSS program. E-learning, for instance, offers a reliable source for accessing course materials and information to enhance the learning experience. Ladies and gentlemen, the growing demand for the use of technology in learning has resulted in an evolution from the use of desktop computers to mobile devices from which learners can access courses anywhere at any time. The future demand is directed towards micro and self-directed learning, personalized and adaptive learning, utilization of open educational resources, OERs, massive open learning courses, and augmented realities, where learning is achieved through digital visual elements for physical world experience. Indeed, there is greater recognition for informal learning for skill development and enhanced workplace performance through digital learning experiences. Virtual schools are organized in the cloud, thus saving institutions from the challenges associated with server acquisitions and huge financial obligations. These are some of the innovations that the President of the Republic and the Minister of Education are currently engaging on and ensuring that we see these innovations at work in all our schools. Ladies and gentlemen, the acquisition of knowledge in the area of technological advancement has been the major driving force of the fourth industrial revolution and it will continue to reshape our world. As a matter of fact, countries that fail to embrace this trend are likely to be left behind. The United Nations 2030 agenda recognizes the need to develop societies through unlimited access to knowledge, where everyone has opportunities to learn and engage with others. Education in every sense is one of the fundamental factors of development. No country can achieve development, sustainable economic development without substantial investment in human capital. UNESCO has predicted that in the next 30 years, more people will receive education than we've ever recorded in the history of mankind. However, Education Commission also contends that if nothing changes by the year 2030, more than 825 million young people will reach adulthood without a skill needed to thrive in today's world. Government is therefore committed to make this narrative a reality through the Education Strategic Plan that aims at changing the current status quo of 40% CT humanity to 60-40 in favor of science. Research by the World Economic Forum estimates that 65% of children entering primary school today will find themselves in jobs that do not exist, and that new jobs are emerging, and these are technologically driven. And therefore, it is upon us to ensure that we align the tools of our education today to meet the changing demands. 
with the current rate of growth in the technology sector, future educational technology is going to advance the quality of education and even the ways we teach and learn. The future of technology of education is about adapting to the fast-changing world, giving students an opportunity to choose their own way of learning, always considering the current demand on the job market. And this is why that we are particularly happy that Huawei, through its inventive programs such as this one, in Tech for All Education Global Summit and the TOSS, has emerged as a key player in leading this technology mediated agenda with the great support from UNESCO. I thank you very much for your attention. God bless you. Thank you, Mr. Ntim Fojo. The key of the open schools concept is to build an open education model with technology. Under this model, schools are no longer simply a physical venue for learning. They should also be able to connect school-based and home-based learning to ensure the continuity and quality of learning under both normal and crisis situations. Now, Mr. Martin Kangania from the Ministry of Education of Kenya will talk about how Kenya is using technology to make education more inclusive. Yeah, my name is uh, Martin Kungania. I work with the Ministry of Education Kenya, uh, the National Coordinator of the Digital Literacy Program and the Project Manager for School Internet Connectivity, DigiSchool Pilot uh, Project. Um, under the Digital Literacy Program, this is a flagship program under the Government of Kenya, Vision 2030. The main objective of the, of the Digital Literacy Program is to enhance provision of um, quality education through ICT, integration in teaching, learning, and education management. The project aims to entrench learners with their 21st century skills for their future productivity in the economy. Digital literacy is one of the seven core competencies under uh, the Kenyan competence-based curriculum, which is uh, under implementation uh, at the moment. When we look at the overview of uh, the digital literacy program, this is a project program which has been which has been and is being implemented by the government of Kenya. Uh, it entails a provision of uh, public, all public primary schools, uh, connecting them to electricity through the national grid, or for the far-flung schools which are very far away from the national grid, we connect them through solar. The project also entails provision of uh, uh, projectors, these LCD projectors, laptop for the teachers, we refer to them as the teacher digital devices, uh, the learner digital devices, which are tablets, a content server, an access point that hosts a digitized curriculum, which has been developed by the Kenya Institute of Curriculum Development. The Ministry of Education uh, in Kenya, through uh, the Kenya Institute of Curriculum Development, the organization that uh, spearheads the development of, uh, of a curriculum in this country, as development has developed a Kenya Education Cloud, we, uh, which hosts updated and interactive content, as well as various online administrative systems. Currently, uh, 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 building on what the government has invested into the Digital Research Program, we are uh, engaging to see that there is uh, internet connectivity to the schools. If you look at uh, the numbers, the statistics under the Digital Literacy Program, what has been done, we have one, uh, installed schools, the schools that have been installed with the devices that I've mentioned, I mentioned above. Uh, we have installed about uh, 21,717 uh, public primary schools. That makes about 99.9% of uh, the public primary schools which have been deployed with these devices. Two, we look at another aspect of digital content. Uh, the Ministry of Education through KICD has developed uh, content for grade one to grade four, and actually under the new uh, curriculum, the competency-based uh, curriculum. The training of teachers, uh, which has been, uh, which is ongoing, 
uh, about uh, 218,000 teachers, 253, have been trained. This is uh, normally spearheaded by Teacher Service Commission, which is the entity that employs teachers. And also they have done the teacher training in terms of ICT integration, in terms of uh, teaching and learning, uh, research, uh, and other aspects of teaching and learning. Uh, another component of a digital literacy program is the connect, connecting schools to electricity, provision of power to electricity, and I've mentioned we have got uh, 21,588 schools that have been connected to electricity out of, uh, out of uh, 22,258, which are still uh, to be connected. This has been occasioned by the continuous registration of new schools uh, in this country to expand enrollment and to improve access to basic education. So you find that uh, new schools are coming in place. Uh, therefore, not all schools have been connected to uh, electricity. Besides that, uh, connecting the schools to electricity, we also have part of these schools which have been connected to solar energy. Uh, when we look at the, uh, the final uh, aspect or the final component of the DLP, we have the digital devices uh, which we are providing to schools. We have provided about 1.2 million learner digital devices across, this, uh, across the country, all the corners of this country. We have provided also 48,000 uh, teacher uh, digital devices across uh, across the country. Now, building on that, uh, the investment that the government has put in place, um, uh, the Ministry of Education, Ministry of uh, ICT, ICT Authority, UNESCO, and Huawei formed a collaborative initiative to provide sustainable uh, internet connectivity to schools, which is a high-speed broadband of um, a minimum of 100 Mbps, which actually has been done in phase one. It is done either through the uh, uh, optic fiber or through point to point uh, microwave technologies, enabling access to Kenya Education Cloud and other government systems. If you look at this arrangement, this collaborative arrangement, the Minister of Education and Minister of ICT, the roles and responsibilities include where they mobilizing the Ministry of Education staff, uh, making sure that the teacher training is organized and supporting monitoring and evaluation in data collection. The ICT authority has uh, deployed ICT officers in the field or out in the counties and it is them that we are relying upon them to provide technical support uh, for this project. Uh, the project is also utilizing the 9,000 kilometer government fiber optic uh, and the maintaining connectivity and the equipment that are being provided to the schools and also the support ministry, I mean monitoring and evaluation for the, uh, for the project. Uh, Huawei, a key uh, partner in this uh, uh, project, in this uh, pilot project, DG School Connectivity Project. Huawei has uh, supported and given technical assessment, solution design and project management and delivery. They have also provided connectivity to Novby, to schools by fiber optic, I mean by, uh, uh, by fiber or point to point microwave. And they have also provided equipment to enable schools use uh, Wi Fi at the school level. And UNESCO have given advice on school selection and also they have supported the partners, the other the partners and the ministry and the government by extension to give the technical support on monitoring and evaluation uh, uh, activities. So under DG School project, we have got a number of activities that we have done. Uh, we have done school assessments. This is whereby the officers from the Ministry of Education, Minister of ICT, uh, Huawei and UNESCO have uh, visited the, the field to do assessment to the schools, uh, actually before the schools were selected. Installation has been done uh, through optic fiber, where we have, done, we have had a, a digging of trenches to establish the fiber. 
establishing um, microwave uh, mean, uh, installations to offer connectivity and also eventually the deployment of ICT equipment. After all this was done and uh, we were sure that the schools could uh, access internet connectivity, then we had a major launch to the schools, the target schools across the country uh, for the phase one, uh, whereby we had uh, the ICT cabinet secretary, we had the principal secretary in the line ministries providing uh, that uh, support. And then after doing all this, we look at also at the impact of, uh, impact of what is happening. We are seeing more use of ICTs in teaching for the teachers, in learning for, 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 for the pupils in the schools, and also in the support they are getting, the technical support they are getting from the ICT officers and the ICT teacher champions that are spread across the country. We have also an advocacy in media, which promotes, uh, in print media, which promotes and uh, gives the highlight of this project that uh, is actually on, uh, ongoing. So what are the benefits? I think I need to mention a few of these. Uh, the learners have been able to use internet to do research in, 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 uh, in the internet. Uh, they have also been able to use the devices to take photos, upload, them and they even do presentations. For the teachers, they have been also able to offer communication and, uh, and enhance their teaching through research and also sharing the information among themselves. That is a teacher to teacher support, which is very, very critical. And uh, in administration, uh, we have been able to witness improved uh, access to online national education management information system, that is NEMIS. We have TIPAND, uh, NEC assessment uh, portals, and also we have got the registration of candidates, which has been facilitated by this uh, facility. Overall, under phase one of the DG, DG school pilot project, we have uh, met, I mean, we have been able to um, implement this project in 13 schools, and about 6,000 plus uh, pupils have been, or learners, have benefited from this uh, project. Uh, let us all connect schools and ensure no child is left behind. That is the driving motivation, the driving force, the, the vision behind uh, this project. And the government in Kenya will continue working with UNESCO Huawei in the phase two of this project, whereby we are looking at, besides including regular schools in the new project, phase two, we are also looking forward to having hearing impaired uh, learners from the special schools to access uh, internet connectivity and provide also video conferencing for support of teachers and learners to reap uh, the benefits of this. Um, evidence from one of the teachers, uh, Eunice Nganga, a teacher at uh, Ed Teacher at Maragima Primary School in Yuri County, uh, uh, a testimony of the project. She says the teachers are not only accessing teaching and resources and guidelines, but also in comparing interactive learning methods in teaching. That is, a, that is a, the, the, the comment from one of the end teachers for the schools that benefited from uh, this project. Our learners only can learn well by doing and by seeing. And being in a rural school that is a village school, we do not have many things. As in, we get our knowledge only in books. You teach something, they haven't seen it. They have never seen it, so it is abstract in their minds. And so I was able to show them some videos, and it has been good. It is creating interest in the learners. Whenever we get any strange material from the books, we are given a link there in that book. So we are now opening those links, and in every teaching subject now, I mean every teaching subject, including even mathematics. So. We are, we are integrating ICT in every learning area in the school. Overall, I would like to say that this is a big initiative, a big collaboration, collaboration and I hope that uh, as we get along, we continue engaging and uh, making sure that we arise the ICT in education agenda in Kenya. Thank you very much. 
Kenya has been building network connections for schools and providing training in digital skills for students and teachers. This has helped unconnected schools access Kenya's education cloud platform, where digital education resources are available. We expect that these programs will bring positive changes for local students. After talking about how to resolve the challenges to education brought by the pandemic, we may ask, what skills do young people currently need most? Next, let's invite Mr. Jean Dédier, founder of association MUs Connect and We Take Care, to introduce their project in France. We Take Care is an NGO created seven years ago to massively support the social actor helping people acquire basic digital skills. We develop an all-in-one free access platform in which you find all pedagogical contents to support on basic digital skills. And we also perform a set of virtual classroom dedicated to our digital champion community. We take care as a team of 40 people. We are present in France and in Belgium and more than 1 million people was already helped with our educational tools. One of our best projects is the DigiTract, developed in collaboration with Huawei. The DigiTract project in Ile-de-France consisted of traveling to nine cities to offer free training in the basic of digital technology in a container converted into a connected classroom. The project targeted, in particular, the priority district of the cities. Digitract offers a flexible à la carte training program with several levels and several teams. The training were given all day from Monday to Saturday. By placing this highly visible track in the heart of the neighborhood, where they are in the greatest need, the objective is to have an, an accelerated effect on these disadvantaged people into two to four weeks. Our collaboration with Huawei is perfect. On the project, our team on the ground worked in a close proximity with Huawei teams. We take care of brought the expertise in the social world, and the Huawei teams were essential in associating communities with the project, engaging local authorities, and threatening communication about the project. The project has a great impact in a short delay. In 21 weeks, 1,600 people were trained. Well, different type of profiles, elderly people looking for autonomy in their day-to-day -day lives, active people from whom mastering the basic of digital technology is essential for job ending, and children and their parents to discuss the dangers and the opportunities of digital technology. Je me présente uh, Amar uh, Boularas. Je suis en retraite uh, depuis uh, juillet 2009. J'étais cuisinier. J'ai fait toute ma carrière dans la restauration. C'est une lettre de Boris Vion que je suis en train de recopier comme ça pour apprendre uh, à taper sur un ordinateur. Aujourd'hui, uh, ne pas maîtriser le numérique, on se sent uh, en dehors de la société. Ça a commencé par euh, les impôts. Moi, je fais toujours sur papier. Et justement, la dame, euh, il me dit, euh, on passe au numérique bientôt. Essayez de faire une formation. Je me suis euh, inscrit dans des ateliers. Bon, ce n'est pas pour devenir informaticien, <rire> mais connaître euh, les bases euh, de cette nouvelle technologie. Depuis deux ans, la crise sanitaire a accentué la présence du numérique dans nos vies. Mais cette dépendance aux outils technologiques a aussi révélé une fracture. 17% de la population française vit encore éloignée du numérique, avec souvent pour conséquence un risque d'exclusion sociale et professionnelle. Cet après-midi, on va voir la recherche sur Internet. D'accord euh, Donc, euh, rechercher sur Internet, on va voir les bases déjà. Qu'est-ce que c'est que Internet Qu'est-ce que c'est euh, tout ça 
La notion de fracture numérique, c'est avant tout un discours politique avec des pouvoirs publics dès les années 90 qui euh, s'interrogeaient sur un éventuel risque de fracture entre les personnes qui pourraient accéder aux technologies et les personnes qui en seraient exclues. Et on s'est rendu compte à travers les recherches que la fracture numérique n'était pas quelque chose de figé, mais qu'elle se déplaçait aussi sur la question des usages et évidemment sur la question des compétences à se saisir de ces outils. Combler ce manque d'accès au numérique est l'objectif de l'opération Digitruck. Le Digitruck en fait, prend la forme d'un container reconverti. On a fourni des équipements qui sont tous reconditionnés. On a choisi de prendre la forme d'un container qui du coup est mobile, puisque ça nous permet d'aller au plus près des publics qui en ont besoin. Donc nous, l'enjeu avec le Digitruck, en tant que grande entreprise de la tech, c'est d'aller se placer dans les quartiers prioritaires de la ville où on a une forte concentration de personnes qui, euh, de par leur situation, n'ont pas accès à ces compétences numériques. Ok, tous les deux là, vous voyez Vous oui. faites les mêmes exercices, c'est les trois. Ouais, ouais. Les trois. Okay. Dans les années 60, les gens ne savaient ni lire ni écrire, on leur écrivait des lettres, tout ça. Et là, je suis arrivé au point, je, je peux dire que je suis illettré numérique. Merci beaucoup, c'est terminé pour euh, le cours sur le, la recherche sur Internet. Je pense qu'on va prendre un temps, il faudrait qu'on dorme un petit peu là. <rire> on va faire une pause de 10-15 minutes et après on va faire un cours sur acheter sur Internet de manière sécurisée. Il y a du monde ce matin, c'est quoi déjà la formation euh, bah, En fait, normalement, c'était censé être... Euh... À postuler en, ouais, en aux ligne. Enfants, mais... Ouais, mais là, c'est pas la cible. Non, du, du coup, tout, on hein. va faire ce qu'on a prévu hier. Donc, c'était les bons plans sur Internet ah, et payer oui. sur Internet. Ouais. Et, euh, on a souhaité proposer des formations à la carte, c'est-à-dire que les publics qui viennent au Digitruck, ils peuvent venir piocher dans le programme de formation pour aller apprendre des choses spécifiques qui répondent à leurs besoins. Donc on a une grosse partie de, de formations qui sont sur vraiment les basiques du numérique. On a aussi des contenus vraiment sur la sécurité des données, comment est-ce que je navigue en toute sécurité. Donc ça, c'est vrai que c'est une forte demande aussi des, des novices du numérique, on va dire. Quand vous faites un achat sur Internet, oui. il faut bien vérifier que l'adresse sur laquelle vous êtes, il faut qui écrit HTTPS. Oui. Ça veut dire sécurisé. Depuis deux semaines, on a surtout des personnes seniors qui veulent ne plus être en difficulté et ne plus avoir à demander en fait à leurs proches et ils préfèrent venir demander aux formateurs ici dans le Digitruck. J'aimerais bien par exemple faire la feuille d'impôt. Comme en France, on aime la discrétion. J'aime bien la faire moi-même. Je ne veux pas te faire appel à une tierce personne. Il y a des nouveaux termes, des nouveaux mots. Par exemple, arrobase, on ne l'a pas connu à l'école primaire, moi. Par exemple, dièse, on ne l'a pas connu à l'école. Le slash, on ne l'a pas connu à l'école lorsque j'étais jeune. Vous avez vu, il faut ouvrir un nouvel onglet, il faut cliquer sur le petit plus qui est là. Et on va faire la question suivante. Quand on dit onglet, moi, dans la restauration, c'est un morceau de bœuf. Hein il s'écrit de la même façon. Hein le bouton rouge, il sert à quoi Alors attends. Ah, eh bien écoute, j'ai appuyé et rouge, ça va terminer un appel. C'est éteint. C'est pour raccrocher, exactement. Ça. On a un acteur partenaire qui est WeTechCare, qui est très expérimenté en termes de contenu de formation et de médiation au numérique. Et on travaille aussi au maximum avec des acteurs locaux à l'échelle de la ville où on va se rendre, qui connaissent très bien leur public et qui connaissent très bien leurs besoins. Madame Amélie, voulez-vous me dire comment faire pour euh, obtenir un extrait de naissance Oui. Alors, vous allez aller sur le euh, navigateur Internet, donc Firefox, par exemple. C'est Firefox. Voilà. J'ai cliqué deux fois, comme vous m'avez dit tout à l'heure. Mm -hmm. Vous allez aller sur euh, la barre de recherche qui se trouve en haut et vous allez taper « Rechercher un, un extrait d'acte de naissance ». Vous vous laissez l'écrire oui, 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 bien sûr, bien sûr. La numérisation des services en ligne peut avoir comme conséquence de provoquer une double peine chez les personnes, par exemple en situation de précarité sociale et professionnelle. Dans la mesure où ce sont ces personnes qui sont les plus éloignées, ou en tout cas qui euh, éprouvent des difficultés à euh, accéder aux outils, mais qui doivent y accéder pour percevoir leurs aides sociales et euh, réaliser leurs démarches administratives quotidiennement. La fracture numérique, ça concerne en majorité les seniors les plus de 65 ans, mais en fait, c'est beaucoup plus que euh, juste une histoire de génération. Ça concerne aussi beaucoup de profils plus jeunes qui n'ont pas eu la chance d'avoir un accès à une éducation euh, dans le numérique quand ils étaient plus jeunes. Et c'est aussi ce genre de profil qu'on souhaite attirer à, au Digitruck. Après trois semaines dans le nord de Paris, 
le Digitruck va poursuivre sa route dans d'autres villes d'Île-de-France pour accompagner de nouveaux publics vers l'autonomie numérique. J'ai beaucoup aimé le, le principe du, du coup de pouvoir amener la salle de, de, de cours, la salle de classe dans les quartiers qui en, qui en ont besoin. Donc ça, c'est la première fois que je fais ça. C'est un peu la surprise chaque jour de voir qu'est-ce que je peux leur apprendre et qu'est-ce qu'ils peuvent s'apprendre aussi entre eux. J'ai appris le copier-coller. Je ne suis pas encore en mesure euh, hein, de faire Excel, par exemple. Là, non, pas encore. Hein. On, on fait ça pas à pas. Je peux dire la vérité quand même. Hein. Je tape qu'avec un doigt. Thanks to Huawei Super Team. Help will continue our collaboration in other locations in France for a long time. Thank you, Mr. Dadier, for sharing your experience with us. Digitruck is providing digital skills training to young people in communities with limited network access through mobile solar-powered classrooms converted from used shipping containers. This not only helps bridge the digital divide, it also enables unemployed young people to improve their competitiveness in the job market. By June 2022, Huawei had partnered with more than 2,000 universities and colleges around the world to build Huawei ICT academies. The aim of this program is to provide students with hands-on experience with ICTs and cultivate technical talent. The Bandung Institute of Technology in Indonesia is one of such institutions. And now, Professor Rainy Wadahardi Kusuma, rector at the Bandung Institute of Technology, will share the Institute's experience in talent development and her views on future education. Good morning. Thank you for this uh, privilege to speak to all of you today in the Huawei Tech for All Education Online Summit 2022. In this uh, happy occasion, let me talk about what Institute Technology Bandung, or we call ourselves ITB or ITB. Uh, we have been striving this year, uh, that is to become future ready, to be locally relevant and globally respected as well. Sped up by the COVID-19 pandemic, digital transformation has become a necessity for all of us in, in educational uh, institution. Uh, and also in ITB, we have to uh, change, we have to transform ourselves to thrive now and also in the future. So broadly speaking, uh, this involves transforming all its elements in synergy. They are uh, human capital, technology and information system, and the uh, governance and processes. So in today's speech, I will limit uh, the discussion to the aspect of teaching and learning only. Uh, and we can discuss about other aspects, uh, which is uh, research, innovation, and community development for another occasion. A strategic program relating to education or digital transformation has been announced as ITB Education 4.0. So in brief, we would like to serve our students with the meaningful and inspiring learning experiences uh, as such that when they graduate, they turn into lifelong learners, mindful and humanistic team workforce and ready to become future leaders. For us, the future is now. So how do we do this? Mainly by providing the following key foundation. First, We built a smart learning environment. We would like to nurture our students in a hybrid learning system, online, offline, and blended learning mode that provide learners with a joyful 
and meaningful learning process while achieving learning outcomes. Second, however smart a learning environment is, skillful, mindful, and inspiring educators are still the most important factors in shaping the learning outcomes of our students. That's why we invest a lot in reforming and upgrading the hard skills and soft skills of our faculty through various change management programs. We believe before creating great students, we have to be great educators first. Finally, our principle is to foster seamless education. We invest and upgrade our infrastructure and learning facilities to support easy access of learning content by all stakeholders. Learning in a smart learning environment should be challenging, but also joyful and meaningful. It should be effective, efficient, engaging, and inspiring. Our experiential learning is carried out in hybrid and blended mode. Therefore, throughout the learning process, not only the students demonstrate the learning outcomes, but they also to be engaged members of society who aspire for learning, lifelong learning. To cater for the growing needs of Education 4.0 features, we built our own LMS, which is called EduNext. This LMS has been requested to be deployed also for surfing various programs of uh, uh, Directorate General of Higher Education of Indonesia. The LMS supports advanced features such as virtual lab, classroom response system, and AI-based essay grading system. One notable feature of our LMS, coupled with Cognitia mobile app running on Android and iOS iPad, is the anti-cheating exam system. This feature enables ITB to belong to high integrity academic environment. Please note that the mobile device devices may be owned by the students. Bring your own device or our institution. The shown picture here represents a student doing SI exam, uh, writing on a piece of paper, taking photo of it to be uploaded as an answer onto our Edunex LMS. Please also note that the shown Android tablet in the picture is made by ITB. To support borderless and hybrid learning, the LMS is used anytime and from anywhere. During the teaching by educator from the classroom, the students has their turns, whether attending at the same classroom or outside the classroom through video conference app. This picture shows an example of virtual lab running on students' mobile devices. This virtual lab is connected and managed by the Edunex LMS. This is another virtual lab in the form of robotic arm. The robot is a result of multidiscipline collaborative research with the main objective as an experiential learning lab. In addition to fostering smart learning environment and providing seamless education, as I mentioned earlier, ITB gives a strong emphasis on getting the educators great first. We continuously train and upgrade our educators so they possess and demonstrate the seven habits of inspiring blended learning educators. Complying to the national policy of freedom of learning independence of campus, our MBKM Campus Merdeka, ITB encourages its educators and students to engage in one of the program activities. This strengthens our multidiscipline 
interdiscipline, transdiscipline, and multi-campus policy of learning, research, and collaboration. Here are some examples among so many of such activities. Uh, ITB and UNPAD. UNPAD is, a, is another uh, very reputable university in Bandung. Uh, we have collaborative uh, projects. Uh, School of Business Management Technopreneurship Track and uh, SAPPK or the School of uh, Policy and Architecture and uh, uh, pl uh, Planner. They have uh, a program called SAPPK Safe Space and so on and so on. And that's all. Uh, a little bit uh, introduction from in Bandung, Indonesia. So have a great summit, everyone. Thank you for your attention. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Professor Rainey. The Bandung Institute of Technology has collaborated with Huawei for more than a decade. We have collaborated extensively on ICT talent development, teacher training, the Huawei ICT competition, and the Huawei ICT talent drop fair. We have learned about inspiring practices in Africa, Europe, and Asia. Now, let's envision the future. How will the rapid development of digital technology influence the education industry? How can technology enable innovative education? Let's now welcome Dr. Su Yunjin, Director of the Center for Development of Teaching and Learning at the National University of Singapore, to give his take on the trends in technology-enhanced teaching and learning. Hi, welcome to my talk, Trends in Technology-Enhanced Teaching and Learning. I'll first spend some time to introduce uh, the institute I'm from, which is National University of Singapore, and a little bit about myself. Then we'll actually share some ideas right, and thoughts uh, about this topic uh, in the later part of this uh, particular presentation. So first of all, let me bring you to uh, our very beautiful right, uh, campus. Uh, this is actually University of Singapore, right, as you see here. There are three campuses. Uh, the two that you actually see here are the two so-called bigger ones. Uh, we will share with you some of the key uh, information about our university. This is uh, one of the six uh, autonomous universities in Singapore. Uh, it's actually probably the largest. Right? So I'll give you some rundown of the numbers. Right? So these are some of our key information. Uh, this is a, our university is actually a comprehensive uh, university, meaning that we have most of the faculty that you uh, can find. Right? So we have, of course, uh, the science, uh, the arts and social sciences, uh, the computing, the business, right, the medicine, uh, school of design, right, and so on and so forth. Right, so we have uh, thirteen schools in total. Uh, and recent years, we actually have uh, some interdisciplinary uh, colleges. Uh, for example, we have the. Uh, we we'll actually uh, talk about uh, myself. Right, so this is my name. Right, so I'm Yuan Jian. Uh, I uh, actually serve in two units uh, in our university. Uh, first, I'm the director of Center of uh, Development for Teaching and Learning, CDTL. So this is a unit that's actually at the university level, which provide uh, development and training right, to our faculty member uh, in terms of their teaching. And we actually support the university uh, initiative in teaching and learning. Uh, for example, recently we migrate to a new uh, learning management system and we are actually helping right, uh, to push this initiative around. Uh, so other than serving as the director in this uh, unit CDTL, I'm actually an associate professor right, in the School of Computing under the Computer Science uh, Department. Uh, I was there right, and currently still am there uh, for about 20 plus years right, uh, and counting. Right, so I mainly do uh, teaching right, uh, with uh, modules uh, from uh, different years. And uh, as my uh, own uh, interest, I'm actually uh, very interested in tech enhanced education. Uh, that's why I guess I'm very uh, happy right, and honored that uh, Huawei actually gave me this uh, uh, opportunity right, to share some of my thoughts right, uh, in this particular topic. So uh, what I'm going to share with you later on uh, is actually just uh, four ideas. 
uh, I guess the easiest way to actually destroy one's uh, credibility is actually trying to predict the future, right? So uh, I'm not going to do that kind of uh, out of the box uh, Bruce kind of thinking, uh, but rather I will just share with you some of the observation like of the technology that's already in use, uh, but it's not widespread at the moment, right? So we will share four ideas with you, uh, which is actually listed here. Right? The first one I will talk about is actually the so-called self-directed personalized learning. Uh, the second one is called the mastery portfolio, uh, and we will look at uh, student analytics and uh, feedback next. And finally, we'll talk about something uh, known as Beyond 2D. Right? So all of these uh, may have uh, other names right, in your context. So I'll try my best uh, to actually talk to, uh, to, to talk about uh, what they are uh, and what is actually the benefit right, to both the teachers right, and the students. Uh, and most importantly, uh, I will briefly discuss what is actually the technology that enables it. Right? Some of the uh, ideas here, right, the technology may have already uh, been uh, invented right, or discovered, uh, just that it's not actually being placed online yet right, at the moment. Right? So the opportunity in this particular arena uh, in order to try to meet some of these uh, demands in a sense. Right. So first, let's take a look at this idea known as the self-directed personalized learning. So in traditional teaching, right, if you think about your primary school and secondary school, uh, most of the subjects are actually taught in a very linear fashion. fashion right? So uh, once we actually learn um, the first idea, uh, then you actually go on to learn the second idea. Right? Once you actually learn enough, you pro progress to the third idea and fourth idea right, at the end. Right. So most uh, subject actually uh, assume there's a linear progression between the topic, uh, regardless of uh, how the students actually appreciate it. Uh, for example, here, right, let's say this is uh, Da Chen, right, uh, Mr. Chen, and then here we have Xiao Su, right, Miss Su here. Uh, they may have different level of understanding right, or different pace of learning, uh, but in the traditional learning, right, we can't actually cater for them. Uh, so in this particular idea, we, we essentially uh, try to map up right, the learning journey right, of a particular student right, in a particular subject. So instead of a linear progression, we think of it more like a map. Right? So the idea here is that uh, once you learn the first uh, key uh, idea, right, uh, you actually can open up two separate ideas uh, that you actually can learn independently. Right? You can choose to go here first, or you actually can, of course, uh, go here right, first. Right? And more importantly, once you learn one of these, right, maybe you are ready to actually learn the third idea. Right? So you don't need to learn every single thing. You can learn in your own, own order. And more importantly, you actually can explore further right, if that's actually your interest. Right? So this is known as the self-directed learning, meaning that you actually choose uh, how to actually progress about your own learning. Uh, it's personalized because uh, everyone will actually learn at different pace. Uh, and you may even learn different uh, content or different kind of assessment or different kind of assignment tasks and so on and so forth. So for this particular idea, uh, the key enabler uh, for this one is that you probably need a pretty powerful learning management system, uh, which actually provides some way for the instructor right, to define this map right, of learning so that your materials right, can be actually uh, itemized right, or actually put into a small unit so that student can actually learn this. Uh, you need to support some kind of unlocking and tracking mechanism so that you know that uh, this Mr. Chen here has actually reached here via this particular path and um, Miss Su here is actually doing a slower job but then actually more thorough, right? Going through all the topics, right? You need this kind of unlocking and tracking uh, and uh, eventually, right, once you actually have all the pieces in place, uh, you may actually need some additional help, right, to recommend um, the correct path or the preferred path right, to this particular student uh, based on their preference and their performance, for example. Right, so on that front, uh, maybe something look like an AI tutor right, may works. Basically, it will tell uh, this uh, Miss Su here that, oh, uh, from your performance so far, it seems that uh, this particular path will be more suitable for you, or right? you may actually enjoy it more and things like that. Right? So that is actually the full idea of this uh, self-directed personalized learning. Right? Next, uh, we'll look at some ideas that may be related, right? but I actually discuss them uh, in isolation uh, because you probably can uh, look at adoption right, uh, of each of the individual ideas right, without uh, taking the full package right, in a sense. Uh, so the second idea is known as the mastery portfolio. Uh, so at the moment, if you think about how we traditionally 
um, accredited, right, or actually grade a student uh, is essentially after a student complete a particular module or a course, uh, he or she will actually just uh, receive a grade, like A for this particular subject, B minus for another subject, and so on and so forth. Uh, this actually has several uh, drawbacks. Right? Uh, first of all, it's a very cost uh, evaluation. Right? So this student may have done very, very well right, in other assignment, uh, but then on the final due to some uh, issue, uh, maybe uh, she's not well, right? she's sick and so on, uh, that actually compromise right, the, the particular uh, performance, right? but this can't track it. Right? And also inside a particular course, uh, you may actually learn many different skill set right? and different topics. Right? So this is essentially trying to uh, talk about your, your, your result right, in just one number right, or one grade. Right? So what is actually possible is uh, we actually want to have a more fine grain uh, portfolio for the student or what we call the mastery portfolio right meaning that uh, each of these bar is actually a skill right so let's say right for simplicity this is actually for writing right uh, how good is this student writing uh, this may be about presentation let's say right and each of them is a different skill set then in a particular course right you may have learned right up to this particular point right uh, about your, your your writing and then from your performance we know that you have accumulated this much of uh, mastery uh, then in another course you actually can learn a little bit more and so on or you can actually do your own uh, study and so on by right, trying to crank this up right to a higher level right so this uh, first of all track individual skill right of the student uh, and at the same time, you actually give a more complete picture of the capability of this student, right? So you can see that, oh, this student is pretty strong in writing uh, and presentation, but maybe weaker in some other area. Uh, you can imagine that this will be a valuable tool for a future employer who is looking for a certain kind of employees uh, that may not be a well all-rounder, right, but uh, very strong in a particular area, right? So this is known as a mastery portfolio. Uh, now, again, to enable this kind of uh, portfolio, you again need some kind of a learning management system that you uh, uh, enable the instructor to indicate the mastery points. Uh, you need to uh, be able to assess right, uh, the, the student, uh, and then you can accumulate between the courses. Uh, and uh, more importantly, this could be set up such that it's available to public. Of course, the student probably should uh, uh, agree to that. Right, so that is actually a valuable piece of information for the future employee, right? And uh, uh, the third one right, is known as the student analytics and feedback. Uh, I guess this is actually not uh, something very groundbreaking. Right? So in the past, again, for a student, we only know the student uh, performance and engagement about the course in only specific point in the course. For example, uh, during the mid-semester uh, test, Right, then you see a score, right? then you know how this student is performing, uh, and then this may be the final exam. Right? Then you actually know, oh, the student actually did very well right, in the final exam. Uh, but you have no way to know how is this student performing throughout the course, and there are probably times, right, for example, this huge dip here, uh, that you probably should be aware of and actually render uh, appropriate feedback right, and assistance right, to the student right, uh, if possible. So uh, what we actually need is actually a more fine grain uh, tracking system uh, to track how the student is engaging with the course. Right? For example, how often is this student uh, viewing the material of the course? How long did this student actually go through the videos? Let's say uh, whether he repeatedly watched certain part of the video or whether he never actually watched the video and so on and so forth. Uh, this actually allows the teacher to have a better understanding of the student and able to actually pinpoint the, uh, the time right, to render help right, for the student. And finally, right, again, something not uh, very groundbreaking uh, is uh, right now, right, the, way, the common way for us to provide information material to the student is still through the 2D um, slides or PDF right, and so on and so forth, right? uh, like what I'm doing here. here right? So this is just a traditional uh, slides. But of course, uh, now technology actually enables us to actually bring right, the cost content right, to beyond just this 2D flat uh, material. Right? So of course, uh, in the past, we already have multimedia and so on, but those again are more passive material where the student will just sit there and consume them. But now you actually can have something known as an AR, right? uh, that basically use uh, some kind of uh, viewing gadget. Right here is a handphone. 
uh, that overlay my right, information right on top. Uh, here you see a game, but you can imagine this actually can be used to teach, uh, for example, civil engineering right, to show uh, uh, some of the construct right, uh, in the real world, I uh, show how uh, what's the stress point and things like that. Uh, you can imagine this can be uh, used to teach architecture, right, uh, so on and so forth, right? And of course, uh, on the other side, you can also look at uh, virtual, uh, virtual reality, uh, where uh, our uh, uh, colleague said Madsen right, has made a huge, right, uh, very successful uh, advancement in this particular area, where actually use a VR gadget, right, to actually view a uh, certain thing in the virtual world. Right? For example, the human body, you actually can tear down different layers, right, so that you can co concentrate on uh, maybe the blood vessels, uh, maybe just the heart, right, maybe just the liver, right, and, and so on and so forth, right. So this is actually another area where we actually see great advance in. Uh, in certain courses, this will make it uh, much more meaningful to the student. Uh, of course, uh, for those uh, courses, they are slightly more abstract. Uh, they are still have a problem of migrating to this, right? Because this probably doesn't make sense for them. Uh, for example, it may not make sense to uh, try to use AR to teach programmer, right? Uh, otherwise, we have done that, right? In a sense, okay? So with that, uh, I think it's a very quick uh, run through of uh, a few ideas that we think uh, there's actually um, a potential right, in near future. Uh, and some of these are already uh, projects right, or some of our colleagues in NUS have already tried it and attempting it. Right? So uh, I think we can actually see some of these uh, 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 ideas right, uh, flourishing right, in near future. Right? So with that, uh, thank you for your attention. Right? Uh, and hopefully this actually interests you in, in some way. Thank you, Dr. Su Jin. In 1992, the science fiction novel Snow Crash first mentioned the concept of the metaverse. As this concept has gained traction over the past two years, people are discussing whether the metaverse will really come into being. And will the metaverse be combined with education? Now let's welcome Mr. Bob Wong, CEO of the startup Pimax Technologies, to talk about this very interesting topic. Hi, my name is Bob Wen, CEO of Pimax. I founded Pimax together with my team. The ultimate VR experience enables humans to become a multi-dimensional space-time species. It has been eight years since Pimax was founded in 2014, and we are exploring various industries, including education, healthcare, safety, cultural tourism, and etc. VR technology is mainly used in high-tech industries. The education industry is a top priority for us at Pimax. In the future, the application of VR, AR, and metaverse in the education industry is of profound significance. Pimax has made explorations in the education industry, including elementary school, middle school, high school, and university, with different technology and education application scenarios at each stage. Ultimately, the application in universities is closely related to work. Today, I bring you a case of Pimax. Sikou Meili School of Economics of Quzhou University. It is located in Longyou County, Quzhou City, Zhejiang Province, and is a university branch. Pimax built a smart classroom with VR devices. This one is the Pimax 8K product. It has won and still holds a Guinness World Record. We did crowdfunding at Kickstarter in 2017. The classroom can accommodate nearly 40 students and is equipped with eight 
VR devices that allow students to draw together, explore the starry sky and the universe. or enter a created space where they can learn. This year, we launched the 12K product, which is very leading in the world. Next, I will introduce the VR plus K-12 smart education system architecture. The data interaction platform distributes data to the VR devices for teachers and VR head-mounted display for students. We offer the VR device in disinfection cabinet and course development computer. This is the overall architecture. Parents can use this app to help the students learn. Here are some of our cases, including multifunctional VR classroom, VR classroom for creativity, VR classroom for experiments, VR classroom for interaction, VR classroom for entertainment, and VR classroom for innovation. This is the value of VR plus K-12 for smart teaching. There are four dimensions including benefits for students, teachers, schools, and education administration departments, featuring travel through time and space, scenario simulation, immersive experience, and learning through stimulating activities. This is the K-12 education development trends globally. Countries around the world, including China, are investing heavily in smart education. The Chinese authorities have introduced guidelines to ease the burden of excessive homework and off-campus tutoring for students undergoing compulsory education. Next, I'd like to show you the application of VR in K-12 smart teaching. VR smart teaching management system VR 3D course resources, VR course development tools, and VR hardware devices, and etc. The VR Smart Classroom can support one to many interactive teaching management and authentically reflect the abstract and difficult knowledge points of K 12 education subjects, making the knowledge in books vivid and build a highly simulated and explorable VR environment for in depth teaching and learning. At present, we have developed more than 1,000 VR 3D course resources covering elementary school, middle school, high school, and other stages. In middle school physics classes, we use VR to understand the Kepler's law of planetary motion and show the principles and discovery process of Kepler's law. This lets students experience the excitement of the scientific forefathers in exploring knowledge. In a middle school chemistry course, Composition of Air, we can learn the air composition and the characteristics of various gases in the micro world in an intuitive way, making cognition of the micro world no longer a fantasy. In geography class, we'll fly to the space to explore the mysteries of the sun and the nine planets in the solar system. In elementary school mathematics classes, students can learn and understand the complex recursive calculation and deduction of the Tower of Hanoi in a short time. Thank you, Mr. Wang. It's amazing that children will be able to learn about things as diverse as space and the depths of the ocean through the metaverse. We look forward to a new era of education enabled by the metaverse. As a leading global ICT infrastructure and smart device provider, Huawei is also actively exploring how to use innovative technology to enable innovation in education. And now, Mr. Jackie Wang, Chief Architect of Huawei's Institute of Strategic Research, will discuss the possibilities of combining technology with education. Today, let's discuss the topic, Digital Technologies Enable Intelligent Education. 
I'm Jackie Wang from Huawei Institute Strategy Research. I'm Chief Architecture. Future education will be fair, high quality, efficient, personalized, and intelligent. Facing the future, education will be different from the original. Teaching will be transferred from experience-based to digital supported. Learning will be personalized. Resources will be intelligent push. Educational management will be transferred from school to region integration. We hope to realize that every student has a digital patient. Every teacher has an artificial intelligent assistant. Every course has a knowledge map and personalized. How to support fair to every student? How to act the smart home and the smart schools? We will be use every new technologies to support smart learning, smart education, smart assessment, and smart campus. And let every student have a better future. How to support with the new technology? Let's have watch a two minutes video. This is the best of times. All things are connected. All things are sensors. All are intelligent. This is exhilarating. It is fortunate to live in this intelligent age, no matter in a hustling city or in the remote mountains. All children can receive education from leading teachers, although far away. Who can tell us what the symbolic technology of the second industrial revolution is? Transformation, high definition, real-time interaction, and cloud technology make the ultimate learning experience possible. Additionally, technology accompanies children at every step. In the PE class, smartwatches are the best assistants. By recording and analyzing children's sports information, they help teachers better conduct student health management and physical education. Back at home, based on the student study, teachers have recommended extracurricular content. By opening the smart education application through cross-screen collaboration and group discussion, students can discuss with each other. AI becomes students' learning partner and assists their individual growth. Xiaohi, what should I do to become an astronaut? Two learning paths are provided for you. Through technology, students learn more happily and efficiently. Technology enhances the experience of participation. The virtual profession feature makes children to experience their dreams to prepare a comprehensive development for future and enable parents to watch their children's growth path in advance. The future has come. Cloud, 5G, AI, big data, and other technologies make online offline integrated education, digital profiling, AI assistant, student analysis, individual teaching, and comprehensive evaluation possible. Teachers and students can initiate learning, live broadcasting, and interactions anytime and anywhere on a variety of devices. Huawei is committed to enabling education with technology, bringing smart education to every child, family, and school. Huawei will focus our new technologies enable intelligent education. We will be give every student, every teachers, and all professors with one portal. We will be unified one cloud to support different services with two students, two schools, two classrooms, two teachers. We also will integrate different technologies together with one platform, including AI, 5G, IoT, etc. We also will unify multi-network together, support with smoothly network, including 5G, optical, Wi-Fi, etc. To every people, students, teachers, professors will be give different screens together with smartphone, with the whiteboard, with computer together. Now, let's we overview Huawei Intelligent Education Solutions. We have four aspects. 
why is for smart campus, why is for smart classroom and uh, scientific research. We also served 65,000 students every year. Using our smart education solution, promoting education quality and uh, equality through the digital technologies. Why case in Chaojia country, Yunnan province, we will support them with one cloud, multi network coverage, and multi screen adaptions to support Chaojia students. To every student have learned on the cloud with multi screen adaptions. We joined intelligent education innovations with different schools, which like Suzhou University on cloud. We also support 5G and AI with Tsinghua University Higher School. We also serve with our smart campus to KFUPM University in Saudi Arabia and support more than 10,000 teachers and students. Using new technology enable intelligent education, Huawei enabling the digital transformation of global education. We served more than 70 countries, 2,600 universities. We also served more than 500,000 primary and middle schools. We cooperate with our 32 partners together to serve our customers. Huawei is committed to enabling education through technologies. Our education vision is bring intelligent education to every student every home and every school. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wang. We believe that education will be more efficient, personalized, and smarter as networks, AI, big data, and other technologies are integrated with all types of education activities, such as teaching, learning, evaluation, and management. Dear guests, thank you so much for your wonderful insights. You've shared with us some of the leading practices from around the world, as well as your vision of how education will develop. Digital technology is a key enabler for us to approach many of the challenges we face from external factors. Advances in digital technology will promote more inclusive education and increase its resilience in resolving challenges in both normal and crisis situations, such as the pandemic. They also help create new models and practices in education. Let's work together to promote the transformation of education with digital technology to give students access to education equity and quality to ensure that no one is left behind in the digital world. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all for today's summit. Thank you for joining us. See you next time.